Uh, my wife spent uh, one and a half year as a member of a UNICEF team near Timbuktu in uh, northern Mali, uh, at the Desert Fringe. And that was the beginning of quite a long uh, cooperation between our department and the Department of Chemistry at the University of Bamako, uh, which is actually still active. Uh, we had 15 uh, master students making their um, master thesis is in uh, Mali and uh, more recently we have had three guest PhD students from University of Bamako. Several of these uh, students have worked with, um, with uh, uh, zinc deficiency. Uh, zinc deficiency is uh, quite common globally in a belt from China via South Asia uh, over Africa and over to, to uh, South America. And um, this is uh, zinc deficiency in soil. But it has also implications for the human health, as you can see on the map below here. Micronutrient deficiencies are common in developing countries. Uh, we can uh, mention vitamin A, iron and zinc. Uh, vitamin A deficiency uh, was a problem when my wife was in, in Mali. Uh, night blindness, people even at bright uh, daylight, they could not find the opening to their tent. They were just, and if you stretch the hand forward to uh, women for especially, uh, she could not find it. Uh, she just uh, searched for your hand. That has largely been solved as uh, vitamin A is fat sol soluble and can be stored in the body so that uh, it is enough to take a uh, tablet once in a month or so. Uh, iron and zinc deficiency uh, are considered to be uh, related as per more recent research. Uh, it is also even considered that zinc deficiency is more common than iron deficiency by some researchers. Uh, zinc deficiency is uh, common in Mali, especially in the uh, Niger Inland Delta. It's uh, along the river Niger from Bamako or a bit northwards from Bamako all the way via Timbuktu to go and uh, to the um, border to, to, uh, to the, the Republic of Niger. Uh, the wheat is the crop which is most uh, affected by zinc deficiency. There is a lot of uh, literature from uh, Turkey. Uh, Turks are uh, bread eaters, the, the most, uh, the largest bread eaters in the world. And uh, they had some problems with uh, zinc deficiency in the soils in the Anatolian high plateau. So there is exist uh, abundant literature from there. Yeah, zinc and human health. Uh, you can see this uh, uh, staple diagram here, uh, which is the um, result of a work by. Uh, Musa a colleague of my wife and my wife, and uh, you can see that uh, they have interviewed uh, quite a number of women and asked them how many children they have given birth to, and uh, how many are uh, alive and uh, at which age the children have died eventually. So you can see that at birth we have uh, accumulated um, uh, rate of, 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 of death of children and that is because of lack of midwives. There are about two to three midwives per hundred thousand people in the northern part of Mali. Uh, then you can see at weaning age when the children start to drink the water and eat the food of the family there is also an accumulation from six to nine months of age. So. Uh, Diarrhea is a very common case, very common reason for the uh, death of children. 
and uh, especially at weaning age. Uh, this has actually, and uh, zinc is very important for uh, the immunodefense. And uh, zinc is uh, nowadays added to this ORS, oral rehydration solution, given to, to children in case of diarrhea when they need more, need, need to be, uh, they are at risk of being dried out. Zinc uh, in food can be made more available by uh, sprouting uh, cereals, for instance. And uh, this is a natural phenomenon. Zinc is present in the outer shells of, of these cereal grains. And if you put a, a cereal grain in the soil and it starts to sprout, sprout, there is an enzyme, phytase, which degrades the phytate, which ties up zinc and phosphorus. And then zinc and phosphorus becomes available for the growth of the, of the plant, coming plant. Uh, fermentation of food, uh, which is a common procedure in Mali, uh, makes also zinc more available in the preparations. Yeah, I should also mention that you can see also there is still uh, a peak there, but uh, that the scale is, uh, is um, for four years, so it's not very very <coughs> Yeah, uh, why is a uh, thing not available in soil? Well, there are quite a number of reasons. In the, the uh, Niger Inland Delta, it is mainly because of low inherent contents of, of zinc. These are old soils and uh, zinc is quite a mobile method. It is uh, rather easily leached out. But there are also other uh, effects. High clay content with the uh, high content of uh, aluminum and uh, iron compounds, which uh, tie up zinc firmly attached to, to, to these compounds. High pH, uh, that is a reason, for instance, for the zinc deficiency in Anatolian high plateau where you have uh, carbonate rich soils. Even in India, uh, you have uh, alkaline soils commonly. Uh, a good way of assessing the, the um, uh, zinc availability for plants is uh, a rather old method, but it is well accepted. DTPA extraction. DTPA is a compound similar to EDTA, but uh, not so strong. And here, to, down to the right, we have the results from the investigations by uh, the people at the uh, University of Bamako and uh, also by our students. And you can see the, the um, available uh, zinc by DTPA extraction. And you can see that the field soils are largely deficient in zinc. Uh, the garden soils are a bit better, and uh, the garden soils means uh, soils in, in villages and in close vicinity to the villages. This is probably due to that the animals, the herds, are brought back to the villages in in night time and uh, they bring they, uh, all the animal droppings uh, enrich the soil in the vicinity of the villages. Of recent uh, dry batteries for uh, radio receivers and so on is also quite a large source of zinc that become. Uh, every Malian uses about uh, 12 of these big drive batteries for, for their radio receivers. Yeah, how could we increase uh, zinc um, availability in soils and uh, in uh, human food? Uh, 
Well, um, Chakmak, Ismail Chakmak, a Turkish researcher, uh, he made a trip to, to India and he said that, that uh, on the basis of the figures that uh, he found in India, he said that this, it would be a highly profitable thing to add sea to the, the uh, Indian soils. Uh, you can add it directly to the soils. That uh, requires quite a number of, uh, quite a, a large amount. You can also apply, apply it to the leaves by spraying a uh, zinc salt on the leaves. That might uh, have more uh, direct uh, effect. Uh, then, of course, uh, you can also choose zinc efficient plants. And there are some uh, weed species that are more uh, efficient in picking up the zinc from the soil. Uh, the last uh, PhD student we had in, in, in Stockholm in our department was Sanata Traoré. She is the first uh, author of this uh, presentation. She could unfortunately not be here. But she has been working with uh, uh, urban and peri-urban agriculture. Uh, urban and peri-urban agriculture is uh, becoming more and more important in uh, African uh, megacities, and uh, Bamako is no exception from that. Uh, Bamako is largely self-sufficient in vegetables by uh, quite a number of small gardens. There are uh, a few thousand uh, cultivators uh, using these gardens and, and planting vegetables. You can see one of these uh, uh, urban gardens here, Magnambubu. Uh, vegetables are important in nutrition. They uh, add to the diversity of the food intake. And um, the content of beta-carotene in, uh, for instance, carrots and in green uh, leafy uh, vegetables uh, helps in in uh, in uh, improving the bioaccessibility of zinc and iron. Uh, Sanata has investigated the, the uh, soils in these peri-urban gardens, and they tend to have uh, considerably uh, higher zinc content than uh, the uh, field soils outside uh, Bamako. And um, one practice that is, uh, has become common in Bamako is uh, urine separating latrines. There is an organization based in Ouagadougou in uh, uh, Burkina Faso that uh, has advocated urine separating latrines. And uh, they have succeeded quite well. So these urine separating latrines have become common. Most of the nutrients uh, in the human uh, excreta is actually, you find it in the urine, less so in the faces. And um, uh, these uh, urine separating the genes have become common. One problem with the collecting the urine separately is that it has to be stored for some time uh, so that it can be hygienized. And uh, during the dry season, uh, it is uh, difficult to apply it to the, to the soil and in the gardens. So um, this has been solved uh, also by this um, organization from uh, Ouagadougou uh, in the way that uh, the urine is composted with um, uh, organic waste. And uh, this makes uh, a soil amendment which is used in these uh, uh, urban and peri-urban gardens. And uh, here you can see a number of these uh, soil amendments which have been analyzed by Sanata. And you can see that the zinc content is quite high there. Uh, at the same time, uh, potentially toxic metals like lead and cadmium are low. So this uh, seems to be quite a, a good way of, of uh, 
taking care of the urine and the organic waste. Uh, she, Sonata has also uh, investigated the zinc content of uh, the products from these gardens, from the vegetables. And they uh, have uh, the zinc content is of the same order as the reference, international reference values. Yeah, here you have a, a, a reference list. I have a number of handouts which I will place in the back of, of the, the locality here. It will not be enough for all of you, but there you, if you are interested in some of these references. Yeah, this has nothing to do with thing, but uh, <laughs> I... Uh, when, uh, a colleague of my wife and my wife made an investigation about the, the content of milk in, in, in uh, different animals. I had the task of looking what the, the, the animals ate and I was deeply impressed by the, the goats. Mm -hmm. They are curious, they are individualistic and uh, enterprising and uh, I, I do admire these animals. This is a good memory from the fortnight I spent with a herder. So that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, Thank you very much for this interesting uh, talk. Um, I was wondering personally about the the thing you've mentioned that the beta carotene increases the bioaccessibility of zinc. Yeah. Is the mechanism known? Uh, I don't know it, but uh, there is a reference here in the the the, uh, the, uh, in the, in the, in the paper. So that's from where I got it. So. Mm -hmm. I am a geochemist, so. <laughs> yes, a question there. Um, vitamin C has also been well documented to increase zinc uptake. Um, vitamin C, so, I, which I don't think is just the pH, I think it has to do with the uh, across the care across the uh, memory. So, if you can increase it and see that with the also. I could put that in two days. Could it be it, yeah. Vitamin C? Okay. Vitamin C, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vitamin C is also a, it's, I, it, it helps carry across the membrane. It's a co-carrying mechanism. So, vitamin C helps uh, zinc uptake and iron uptake. Mm -hmm. yes. Vitamin C? Pardon? Vitamin C. Vitamin C? Yeah. Uh, you, you mean uh, yeah, it's important for the, the yeah, iron? That's, yeah, yeah, that's, no, it's from, for zinc also, it's from the specific. For, for zinc also, yeah, yeah thank yeah, you, thank you. Specific. Yeah, so, so, certainly, yes. Yeah. And that uh, means also that this uh, vegetables is a, is a very important uh, fraction of the, the diet, actually. Yeah. The severe don't contain much of what you can see, but it's very good stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah it's uh, old uh, stuff that uh, iron, uh, there are combination preparations of iron and, and vitamin C because they should be more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to know that it's the same with zinc. Thank you very much for this uh, nice talk and we could, could hear that you speak with the voice of a, a, a deep voice of experience. So it was very delightful. But and the question is that uh, since it, uh, it's uh, nowadays so that we live in a global village, so the food is transported from one continent to another, uh, shouldn't we have a kind of system to to survey the levels of different um, substances, different uh, uh, antioxidants, and different other health-promoting uh, 
substance like such as seed, for example. Yeah, sure, sure, yes. Of course, we have in the developing countries, but if you come to the countryside, for instance, in, in, uh, in a country like Mali, you have very, uh, mostly you have local food, food uh, supply. Uh, I'm also thinking our food sources. Yeah. If there was a kind of label on, on each uh, uh, yeah. container, what's the, the content of different trace elements in there? We had a talk here about uh, the effect of, of uh, wild plants. And there is a lot of investigations about the wild plants used in, in, uh, in the West African countries, in Burkina Faso, in, in Mali, Senegal, and so on. Uh, and uh, there is an abundance of, of uh, information about uh, what these wild plants uh, contain. The risk is, of course, when you have a more efficient commercial agriculture that much of this, the use of these wild plants is abandoned. It is cumbersome to go out in the, the bush and, or in the, the, the savanna and collect these plants and, and so on. So. Yeah, but in, inevitably that's coming, as we heard also from the previous lecture. Even here in Finland, uh, yeah. we focus on the wider <laughs> yeah. food. Yeah, I think we are using our our, our forests. Uh, we are not using them optimally. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much.